Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a Western astrologer and twin flame channel and this is a video about the Aries full moon taking place on October 17th at 7.26 a.m. if you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States. This will be the all signs update for this lunation. Please check a time zone converter for your local time. A few quick announcements before we dive in. There are sessions available this coming Friday and the following but moving quite quickly. Only one one hour and one 30 minute left for this Friday. Afternoon sessions are available if that's easier for you. Or if you're in the Eastern Hemisphere, this would be your Saturday. There's a savings code when you book as a new member of my private list for 10% off. Link to join is below this video. Number two, there are limited relationship readings available at this time since there are so many relationship-focused energies playing out as of the last eclipse and this full moon. So if you want me to have a look at your chart and the chart of someone else for compatibility, challenges, timing, then take the advantage of the 30 or 60 minute six synastry readings as I do not offer them often. Thank you to everyone who joined Star Club for this year. It is now closed until 2025. A very big welcome to the new members to the Star Club family. And thank you to the graduate members joining us for the fall session. Waitlist link is underneath this video. Lastly, thank you to everyone who listens to these announcements at the beginning. I know some people skip past them, but it's the best way for me to notify you about changes, sales, options to work together, and ways you can connect with me for free such as in the comments or chat, which I love to do. Let's take a look at this full moon in Aries Can, uh, at this lunation. Let's get these annotation tools out. We see our full moon here at that 24th degree of Aries. It is conjunct Chiron, which brings a very special energy, which I'm going to talk in detail about in a minute. It is also opposite to Juno, the sun and the creation goddess there. We see a nice square to Mars as well as a square to Pluto and a sextile to Jupiter there in Gemini. And this is a really big energy, especially with the Pluto-Mars opposition and both of them square to this new moon. It makes this new moon very sensitive, a little triggery, which I explained in great detail inside of the Lightworker Energy Update. Many of you have emailed since that update or shared in the Star Club community about how potent this full moon has been for you and how accurate the Lightworker Energy Update has been. So really glad that update gave you not only the courage to face the challenges that may show up now, but also insight into the options and opportunities available through a shift in perspective. It's always my intention to use astrology to leave you empowered, to make your life what you want it to be, rather than limited to what the stars dictate it could be. This full moon combination gives us a good look at what might be wounding us in relationships, thank you Chiron, so that we can take the opportunity to work toward healing and the leadership available through Chiron. This will open the door to a lot of relationships, having the potential to move forward at this time and other relationships, getting the opportunity for a reevaluation period that can lead to greater intimacy or separate paths in the future. Before these positive things can happen, though, the conjunction to Chiron here, the square to Pluto, as well as the square to Mars at the top of the chart there, may have some triggering thoughts and feelings come up. Now, for some, these may be triggering interactions with people. In all cases, if there is something triggering that shows itself, this is just the cathartic release needed to open the door to truth and healing. As I mentioned, more details are in the Lightworker Energy Update about how to use these specific planets and how each of them lend themselves to this interpretation, as well as which signs are going to feel this full moon the most, and first look at how this energy transitions into the new moon in Scorpio on November 1st. The one thing that will be important to know as you listen to this particular lunar update, though, is that this full moon is conjunct Chiron, and we are most familiar with Chiron's identity with wounding. However, the Chironic narrative is one that happens in three acts. The first act is rejection and abandonment. 
The second act is teaching, healing, and guiding others, where Chiron spent the majority of his lifespan and story. And the third act, the perpetual wound and death. To identify Chiron with the final act only limits our ability to understand how we can use this energy to our advantage. So this lunar update, I'm going to give you illumination for the wounded side and the rejection part. However, I know so many of you who've been doing inner work for a very long time have already transcended very much of that. So for every sign, if you do not identify with the wound component, you may be called upon at this full moon to provide teaching, healing, and guidance to others who are going through what you've already grown through. Keep that in mind as you listen. Now let's get into this update for each sign individually. Please have a listen for your sun, moon rising and your natal chart stelliums for a full picture, as well as that of anyone you love to understand them better. If you're joining the live broadcast of this update for all signs, you'll find me in the live chat answering questions as we go. So feel free to ask away and in the comment section one hour after the live doing the same. If you're new, welcome. Definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when these lives hit and you can be a part of the conversation. You'll find the sign that I'm on right here next to where it says Aries full moon at the top of each chart that I'll show you as I go. Let's get into it for the sign of Aries first. Here we go. Aries, Aries rising and Aries moon. This full moon is take is your annual opportunity. And there it is in your first the sector of the sky that represents your selfhood. This is your annual opportunity to complete a cycle. Taking place in your sign, this full moon will illuminate something in your relationship sector directly opposite. As you can see, there's a stack of energy going on over there. This is going to highlight something in your relationship sector that you've either already outgrown or you're ready to outgrow because you've outgrown that aspect of your own identity. Where your own woundedness, thank you Chiron, has left an opportunity for unhealthy relationship patterns to unfold. This full moon will reveal it and motivate you to change it once and for all. Thank you Mars opposite Pluto in square to the full moon. Where you've already been doing the work, this full moon may make it so that you're a guiding light for others who are following in your footsteps with the Jupiter sextile to this full moon in the house of education and learning. And what's interesting as well about this is whether you are in where, whether you're in a committed bond or you're looking for new love, this full moon may also be the beginning of an extended process where you are transforming your relationship to your childhood family of origin, culture of origin, or home. This reshaping, which may require a little revisiting, will allow you to feel more like yourself in the world. Now, for some, this will be as simple as renewing a lease, but for others, this may be moving back home, if even temporarily. And still for others, this will be the reshaping of a money or debt-related issue to do with housing, as Mars also governs this house of investment and debt, and Mars is here in the sector that deals with home. Because this Mars is speaking to the full moon, but is also speaking to the sun in your relationship sector, moves made now with regard to healing when it comes to home or restoration when it comes to home will assist you in setting the stage for healthy relationship in the future. All in all Aries, this full moon is one of healing and closing out a cycle, and what started now may extend through the Mars retrograde completion in February or the completion of the shadow period in May of 2025. So use this time wisely. Aries, if you could use a reading about any of this, you can find me at Kmoon Astro. Link is below this video. Let's talk more specifically and in detail about love because this is a big full moon for love for you, Aries. Where it comes to love, this full moon sees a continuation of a large stellium of energies moving through the sector that deals with romance and commitment. 
and picks up where the new moon in Libra left off. So if you have not listened to that Lightworker Energy update or all signs, please do. In particular, where Lilith and Juno oppose your sun, there is a true clarity about what you do and do not want in commitment. There may be more challenging conversations coming up at this time with Mercury moving into Scorpio that allow you to reveal or hear secrets or innate things, intimate things that may be difficult to hear or share, but are necessary for the health of your relationship with self and another. Whether you're admitting these things to yourself or someone else in therapy or in a committed bond, these communications do seem to clear the air and make space for the needed release of anything in your identity that has held you back from deeper love. There's also a chance here for some deeper healing through the act of physical intimacy since Mercury rests in this particular sector of the sky. But it will require courage and a high level of self-acceptance, particularly of anything with anything having to do with your body and where your body is at this particular time, okay? Further, where you've not been able to accept your body, this will show up at this full moon as an area of life needing your attention and healing, and you'll have insights about what you need to do to take the next step into wholeness. Aries, if you heard something that resonates or illuminates, please hit that like button, and if you're new, subscribe so that you can be a part of the conversation in the future. Let's talk about Taurus now. Taurus, this full moon takes place in, just trying to move this over. There we go, moving it over. There we go, bigger chart. That's what I want. Taurus, this full moon takes place in the sector of the sky that has to do with your subconscious mind, your dreams, your blind spots, and your intuition. You may find that this will be a very active dream period where you're able to tap into intuitive knowledge and information about your life that may have previously been unavailable. Further, because of this full moon's connection to the sector of the sky that deals with relationships that host imbalanced power dynamics, such as doctors, patients, teachers, students, boss, employees, you may find that there could be either healing or revelation unfolding in relationships of this nature that help you turn over a new, new leaf in this area. If you've been the kind of Taurus to have challenges when it comes to people in positions of power or people you have power over, this full moon will help you reshape those relationships by rebalancing your own relationship to your self-worth, self-esteem, and earned income with Jupiter in that sector of the sky aspecting this full moon. If there has been any woundedness in your subconscious that's allowed you to have imbalanced relationships to money, such as being an under-earner, financially anorexic, an overspender, etc., this full moon will will help you understand the root of the pattern if you're willing to look and give you some ideas, thanks Jupiter and Gemini, of how you can explore a new pattern with your resources and what you value. And Taurus, if uh, you need any support with that, you can always book a reading with me over at kmoonastro.com. Link is below this video. Where it comes to love, Taurus, this full moon is the first since April that will see the modern ruler of your love sector, Pluto, finally in direct motion in the sky, moving toward your career sector. This means that for some Tor Taurians, you could see yourself finding new love in the career space and more broadly, this will be about you stepping into who you want to be in love and relationship after a long period of reflecting on your potential and possibilities this year. For the Taurians and a committed bond, this is where you may find that there is some underlying tension between your work life and love life, and you may not be able to put your finger on the root of it until Mars, the ancient ruler of your love sector, turns retrograde in December, but... Themes having to do with the issue will begin to show themselves as early as this full moon as Mars is in shadow, with Venus at the end of your love sector here, opposite Uranus here. Okay. 
and sextile Mars here. There we go. You may find that this full moon is a period of time where you're feeling like trying something new and exciting in the bedroom for those of you already exploring or committed to another person. For the Taurians looking for love, you're likely to find it in your community as well as through siblings, cousins, or neighbors with Mars roaming through that sector of your life or through work with Pluto roaming through that sector of your life. In all cases, looking for love or already found it. This full moon is going to open your eyes to any blocks you may have to having love land or deepen, especially with regard to Plutonian fears of fear, Plutonian themes of fear, shame, rage, and power that need to be resolved for your love life to go to the next level. Now, Taurus, if you heard something that resonates or illuminates, Definitely hit that like button. And if you're new here, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be a part of the conversation for future lunations. Let's take a look at this full moon in Aries for the sign of Gemini. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising. For you, this full moon takes place in the sector having to do with your friendships, your colleagues, your peers, your hopes, wishes, and dreams fulfilled. Where there has been any level of not enoughness in regard to these areas of life, you will find this full moon lets you know how you can grow past the woundedness and into wisdom and collaboration with these types of people and with regard to your dreams. There are potent partners in the wing for you, Gemini. With Juno opposite this full moon in the sector that deals with your creativity and specifically in the sign of partnership and alliances, but it will require taking a good look in the mirror at the patterns that have evolved that may have made friendships, colleagues, or your dreams hard to come by or hard to sustain once you have them. In particular, habits or patterns that may ask may mask the root of the problem when it comes to sustaining connections or dreams. It may be easy to project and see others as the problem here, but it will be important to remember the spiritual truth that our world takes the shape of our identity that we've created for ourselves. If you've had any type of abandonment wound in this area of life, this is the opportunity to shed the identity of the abandoned and look to see where self-abandonment may be at the root of the issue and first cause. If anyone can stay curious and open-minded enough to find new solutions to old problems, it's a Gemini. Gemini, if you could use any support to understanding how this might be playing out in the specific nuances of your chart, then look with me over at kmoonastro.com. Link is below this video. Gemini, let's talk about your love life. This full moon will open a short period of love being magnetized as you receive your annual transit of Venus moving into your opposite sign from October 17th through November 11th. For the Geminis looking for love, this is one of several annual opportunities to find it because the governor of your love sector is in your home sign though. And that's Jupiter here. Your love sector is governed by the sign of Sagittarius and Jupiter is its ruling planet. Because the governor of your love sector is in your home sign, many of you may be enjoying yourselves so much just doing what you love that either you've got too many suitors or you're too busy to notice the ones that have come in. With Jupiter in your sign, May of this year until June of 2025, you've all, you're already in a period of heightened blessing when it comes to love opportunities coming your way since Jupiter brings opportunities and is the governor of your love sector. Venus transiting your love sector only amplifies this already auspicious season for you. This full moon in particular will help those Geminis who feel like love has passed them by or who may have fallen into pessim pessimism about their opportunities. Why? Because this full moon will reveal any woundedness or rejection when it comes to not being good enough for your dreams and what's at the root of that since it unfolds in the hopes, wishes, and dreams sector of your sky. 
This is the full moon to go deep, whether you're unsatisfied in a committed bond, stuck in love, or just wanting to experience more in the love department. This going deep will allow you to release any patterning that's prevented you from living the love of your dreams. Gemini, if you've heard something that resonates or illuminates, please hit that like button. And if you're new here, subscribe so that you can be part of the conversation at the next lunar update and hit that notification bell. Let's go ahead and check out this full moon in Aries for Cancer, Cancer rising and Cancer moon. Cancer, this full moon takes place in your career sector and your reputation sector. You may find that you have an acute experience in this area that leaves you feeling rejected, abandoned, or wondering if you or your work is good enough. Now, for some, this is a moment where you may find you step into teaching and training others so they don't have to go through what you've grown through. But for most, the experiences triggered by this full moon will open up where you're either ready to transition into a new career, where you're recognized for what you bring to the table, or where your wounds are keeping you from the recognition that's yours and it's time to play a bigger game in your career. In particular, if there are any childhood wounds to do with your parents' careers or relationship with work and family that have held you back, the light bulb may go off at this time with the governor of your home sector opposite Uranus in the dream sector. Uranus can bring the ahas. Venus as governor of the home sector lets us know that the ahas about home can come in. If loyalty to not surpassing your parents' success or being so driven by not repeating their mistakes when it comes to work and love is starting to hold you back from your success, it has been a sticking point for you. It will show itself now as a challenging decision that must be made so you can progress in your career. Cancer, you've been in an ongoing process of letting the machinations of your subconscious mind get revealed to you with Jupiter in the sector that deals with the subconscious mind and your intuition. As you come to realize why you do the things you do, you're going to have the best chance at changing it. Cancer, if you could use any support around this for your career, you can certainly book a reading with me over at kmoonastro.com. Link to do so is below this video. Let's talk about your love life now. Where it comes to love, Cancer, this full moon is the last that you will see this year with the governor of your love sector, Saturn, here in retrograde motion, which may have had you reviewing the past and tying up old loose ends romantically. As such, some may be finding that a romantic revisit with the past reaches a critical stage at this full moon, where you realize that either one, you've outgrown another person or love, the love is not there and it's time to let go so you can reach your full potential in love with Saturn, governor of your love sector, transiting those belief systems and or second chances sector of your sky. Number two, you may be realizing you're out of tools and the only way you can move forward is if you learn new skills in relationship and communication because the love is still very much present, but the know-how to sustain a healthy connection is not. That sector of the sky where Saturn sits is also the sector that deals with education. Number three, you may realize that it's time to stop dwelling on the past and move forward to make this thing between you and them official. For those of you who are in something committed, variations of the affirmation may be what you're facing in particular recognition about where it's time to either learn new skills or let go of the past so the future has a chance to breathe. And for cancers in a committed bond, this is where old dogs will realize it's time to commit to learning new tricks for the health of the connection with Saturn in the sector that deals with learning. Now, for those looking for love, again, similar themes apply where you're ready to stop identifying with past wounding or levels of consciousness around rejection and abandonment. 
the Chironic themes and start identifying with the wisdom and what you've triumphed over and how capable you really are in love. Again, you may need to learn a few new things through a coach or a course to actualize love in the third dimension, but with a full moon like this, you're ready to do what it takes to move forward. Now, for a very small few of you, this is the full moon before you get news about a visa, passport, or other travel-related issue pertaining to your love and relationship life and it does look like whatever may have been blocked before does get unblocked in november once the governor of your love sector goes direct in your travel sector just in time for the holidays and the new year so keep that chin up cancer if you've heard something that resonates or illuminates please hit that like button subscribe and feel free to share uh, with folks who may need to hear this for themselves. Let's take a look now at this Aries full moon for Leo. Leo. There we go. This full moon is taking place in the part of the sky for you that has to do with long distance travel, higher and continuing education, your faith and your belief systems here. This full moon may challenge your belief in your potential, as well as bring up some triggers in communication with others pertaining to these things. Now, for many, there's a chance that you may find yourself confronted by what you need to do in order to take your career or purpose to the next level, as feelings of wondering about your worthiness surface. If you've considered returning to school or traveling a far distance from where you are now in order to achieve a dream, you may wonder now if it's worth it, and underlying that thought may be a concern of whether or not you have what it takes to make it worth it in the end. If you've ever struggled with a learning challenge or being neuroatypical holding you back from taking steps toward a goal, this full moon may trigger you to look at that wound and work on healing it and greater self-acceptance. Further, for those struggling with visa, passport, or travel issues, you may get disappointing news at this time that may be part of the formal process, but it is repealable or revisitable as we get into the Mars retrograde in December. So if it's not the news you want, know there will be a second chance for reconsideration between December and February with Mars going retrograde and Mars being the governor of that sector that deals with long distance travel, you will need to pay attention to your intuition to really take advantage of the opportunities for that second chance as Mars will be in the sector that deals with intuition and blind spots. But once you find out what you didn't know the first time, you can always apply again and have a better outcome the second time. Leo, Let's deal with your love life now. Take a look at your love sector. And if you need any support with the things I just mentioned, you can always book a reading with me over at kmoonastro.com. Link is below this video. Where it comes to love, there may be a looming sense that everything is about to change for you. And so it is. With Pluto now direct and moving toward your love sector and re-entering re that sector in November, You've likely made some significant decisions between March and now that will have you moving in new directions in love through tying up loose ends with Pluto having departed your love sector only to return to it in November. With Pluto now finally direct, you're at the dawning of a new chapter in your love life, one that will have you starting to feel your own power to create and leave you capable of confronting things that may have previously scared you in love, especially with this Pluto trying the ruler of your love department, Uranus there, you may start to realize that the kind of relationships you've previously had or even types of people you've previously been attracted to have changed. For some, this is the beginning of a deep and transformational period of, period of time in love and relationship itself. And for others, in particular those in a committed bond, this may be a period where you begin to feel your love life take a turn towards something much deeper and transformative as you shed layers of yourself. 
In all cases, the deeper you're willing to go, the more connected and aligned your romantic partnerships can be at this full moon. Whether you're in a committed bond or seeking something new, the transformations at this full moon ev that this full moon will evoke allow you to get to the next level of intimacy, Leo, which is something I know you're going to enjoy. Leo, if you've heard something that resonates or illuminates, please hit the like button. And if you're new here, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be a part of the conversation as we move into the future. There we go. Now let's take a look at this Aries full moon for the sign of Virgo. Virgo, this full moon is going to take place in a part of the sky that has to do with what we call other people's money, debt, loans, and taxes, inheritances, lotteries, and grants. This sector also has to do with transformation, the full-on ending of a part of who you were and the full-on beginning of new elements of yourself. Due to Chiron conjunct this full moon, there is a chance that you may find yourself in circumstances that challenge your ego and worthiness when it comes to these matters. If you should get news about a financial situation that challenges your belief in yourself or your worthiness, know that this news can be challenged during the Mars retrograde in Cancer and, and potentially overturned for those that are working hard to get their finances in order at this full moon. You may begin to see some underlying patterns around worthiness show up that help you understand what needs to change in order to be in a better position financially. And for those for whom money is not the main topic of conversation, but growth and transformation is, this full moon may bring up some long-held, deep-seated challenges you may have held about your worthiness, in particular in love. Now, this is all happening for the purpose of helping you see that the story you may have about yourself is just that, just a story, and stories can be rewritten at any time. If you need any help writing a new love story, you can always find me over at kmoonastro.com. Link to do that is below this video to book a reading. Let's talk more directly about your love sector now. Virgo, in the love department, this full moon does seem to bring up some challenges when it comes to physical intimacy as it takes place in the sector that specifically deals with physical intimacy. Whether your partner is away, busy, or they're struggling with their own issues in this department, Virgos in a committed bond may find this full moon conjunct Chiron and Aries evokes a sense of rejection or undesirability in this area of life. For those looking for love, this may be a full moon at which you might feel a little passed over and wondering how attractive you really are. No matter the trigger or the situation, Virgo, this is an opportunity for you to deal with any underlying self-esteem or identity challenges that may show up with this full moon in the physical intimacy department. There's a small group of you that there is a little bit of warning this full moon comes with, and this is what it is. With Chiron, who represents wounds, connected to this full moon in the sector that deals with physical intimacy, this is a great time to practice safe intimacy and use protection for all the reasons you think I might be saying something like this. I'd be more direct, but I have found this particular platform has a problem with that, but I know you're all smart cookies, so I'm trusting you to know what I mean. If you've got a question, you can always get with me in the comment section. But there is a chance here in the love department with your ancient ruler connecting to this full moon that those of you looking for love could also find it through a work-related situation as well. And that's Jupiter there in your work sector. And happenings in a way that start with a lot of physical chemistry. Again, the guidance here is to use protection if you plan to play full out, okay? Now, I uh, said what I needed to say about that. Hopefully that was, that's about as clear as I can make it. <laughs> 
hopefully you could pick up what I was putting down. Uh, if you heard something that resonates or illuminates Virgo, this is a great time to hit that like button, subscribe, and share. If uh, you know a Virgo who could use that added detail, please share it with them. Let's talk about Libra now. Libra, this full moon for you takes place in your partnership and relationship sector, and it brings up some challenging feelings when it comes to love and worthiness and connection. The experiences you have at this full moon may also challenge your faith and belief that you can have the love you want in this lifetime. However, whatever you see or experience that triggers this for you, there's a possibility that you can overcome it through looking at things from a different perspective. And this also may be where you get the clarity you need in order to have the love you want. It's necessary to learn some new skills, whether it's in the arena of learning how to flirt, learning how to communicate vulnerably and let someone in, or practicing opening your heart again. Education is indicated as the pathway to overcome any love-related triggers that show up at this full moon with Jupiter in Gemini. In the sector of education, sextiling this very triggering full moon in your love department. And this is a great thing. Whether you are a Gemini, who, or sorry, if, whether you are a Libra who is in a committed bond or looking for love, you may feel love or we, we can all feel love or in love, but it does take skill to behave in loving ways to sustain a relationship. And this isn't something we're taught in school. It's also, unfortunately, not something that's obviously or overtly taught in homes. If you really want to learn the skills, you're going to have to seek them out. So if something triggering comes up in love, this is your chance to jump at the opportunity to expand your knowledge on relationships so that you can have the love that you want. Now, Libra, if some of that resonated or illuminated some things for you, now's a great time to book a personal reading, understand maybe some of the roots of challenges in your love life from the perspective of your natal chart and where solutions sit for you. Link to do that is below this video. Let's take a look elsewhere in the sky, Libra. At this full moon, we are in the thick of the Mars retrograde pre-shadow in the world of work. Now for you, because this will also impact your earned income sector uh, between now and February, well, really the Mars retrograde is December through February, but we're already in the pre-shadow period. It is important for you to pay attention to the themes that show up now. Many of these themes will have to do with business or project partnership and leadership and collaboration. So pay attention to where there is tension or where there are triggers now, as they will require some revisitation during that December to February retrograde period. Further, in your earned income department specifically, if you hold a role in an existing organization, you may be asked to step back into a role you've previously held before or revisit a project you've already completed with a client at this time. Now, hopefully you're in a position to do this and negotiate for more money, but where you're not able to negotiate for more money, I do see that the effort you put in now is something you can use to elevate your status after Mars goes direct and leverage the experiences now to get more money either elsewhere or at a later time. For those of you who work for yourself, this may be the relaunch of a project that you've already done before with Mars preparing to go retrograde, a launch of something new with old partners or bringing something back off the shelf that you've previously put on hold. If you're planning to launch something completely new, I'd recommend waiting until Mars has completed its retrograde cycle if you can, and that will be in February. Alternatively, you can build in some older partners or features 
to your project that will align with this retrograde energy for greater success if you cannot wait. Now, again, if there is no raise or new money in this for you now, it does look like that money is coming in the future and you can leverage this project for greater earned income in the first six months of 2025 and beyond once Jupiter moves into your career sector. Now, if you heard something that resonates or illuminates Libra, it's a great time to hit that like button, subscribe and share with your fellow Librans who may need to hear some of the guidance and advice at this time. Let's talk about Scorpio now. Scorpio, this full moon takes place in the sector of the sky that has to do with your physical health and well-being, as well as people who have power over you and people you have power over. So bosses, direct reports, and other people you may hire, such as a doctor, mechanic, trainer, or therapist, or who may hire you. If you should have an interaction with one of these people leading up to this full moon that causes you to feel less than in any way, or an interaction that creates a sense of rejection or abandonment, this is an opportunity to do the interior mental housekeeping about your own belief systems that keeps you out of this position in the future with Mars preparing to go retrograde in the sector that deals with your belief systems. Further, this may be a full moon where you have a psychosomatic illness show up with Chiron conjunct the full moon in this sector that also deals with physical health and well-being. You'll know it in an if low thoughts and feelings are opening the doorway to low physical health, you're going to know it in an unmistakable way at this full moon, and it will be your signal to begin working to change your mind to change your health. With Mars already in shadow and preparing for retrograde motion in your sector of belief systems and higher education, there is some indication that taking greater responsibility for the linkage between your thoughts, beliefs, and feelings between now and the end of Mars retrograde in February can set you up for a lot of success in 2025. Now, this is all a part of a greater metamorphosis for you, Scorpio, as you are shedding 14 years worth of baggage coming into November with your ruling planet moving into a new sign for the next 20 years. Hooray! So if you're starting to wonder when things may lighten up or change for the better, it's right around the corner. And this is your signal to make choices aligned with the desires of your heart. Now, if you need any support, Scorpio, rising or moon, you can definitely check out uh, a reading. And the link to do that is below this video. Let's talk about your love life, Scorpio. When it comes to love, this full moon sees one of the co-rulers of your love sector featured in opposition to Chiron's conjunction to the full moon. So, You've got one ruler, Venus there, directly opposite Uranus here. With We also see Juno here, opposite Chiron here. Juno and Venus are the governors of Scorpio's love sector. Now, with Juno opposite Chiron, this full moon may bring about a sense of potential rejection or abandonment or loneliness in the love department, but with the sun, Juno, Lilith, and the shaman's asteroid in the sector that deals with the subconscious mind, all here, the stars are inviting you to consider where there may be patterns that have been meant for your protection or been a product of learning painful lessons from the past that have actually kept you at arm's length from love's embrace in the present. The universe has worked overtime in the last one and a half years with the South Node transiting through Libra in the sector that deals with your subconscious mind here. The South, this, this has facilitated a clean out when it comes to your subconscious mind and love. 
so that you can illuminate and in particular the last month what may be holding you back in love. Now, whether you're in a committed bond or you're looking for someone new, this full moon is asking you to take stock of your existing love story and where it's led you to places you no longer wish to be. It's also inviting you to change the song if you don't like dancing to it. This theme gets louder as we go into next year with Juno, our marriage and partnership asteroid, retrograding in your sign. But for now, this full moon marks an important turning point in giving yourself permission to either love again or love more deeply, depending upon your relationship status. All triggers or woundings that come up at this time for revisitation are the stars assisting you with turning your ship in a direction that's more aligned with who you've become. You've got this, Scorpio. And if you heard something that resonates or illuminates, definitely hit that like button and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I'm here at the new and the full moon to illuminate the energies for us and give you an opportunity to take your next steps. Let's take a look at this full moon in Aries for the sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising. This full moon takes place in your creativity, fun, flirtation, and children sector. Now, for a few, this will strictly be about children or trying to conceive. You may find there is some difficulty with either at this time, such as learning your child is being bullied at school or perhaps is neuroatypical and requires some assistance in education to succeed, or that there is some health reason behind difficulties in conception if you're trying to conceive. This could be, this could leave you feeling eh, a little bit rejected for some by your child as they move on to a more independent stage of their development. And for others, this full moon may bring a sense of rejection from a suitor before things even get off the ground. And more generally speaking, this full moon may have you wondering why your creative works or projects may feel a bit rejected by the world. There is a bright spot, however, with Jupiter sextile this full moon in the sign of Gemini from your partnership sector. This will allow you to find some faith and belief in yourself and your prospects for a brighter future in these areas may also help you find alliances and friendships that can have your back and can speak words of encouragement to you should you find yourself feeling low about rejection on any front. So definitely reach out to friends where you need to for the perspective you need if you find yourself feeling low. And if this is pertaining to a child, definitely if they need support, take the necessary steps. I do see Jupiter has alliances available for you to support your child's learning and education if that's needed at this time. Now, uh, if you need any support trying to navigate this, especially those of you with children, parent-child relationship readings are available on my website uh, over at kmoonastro.com. So our synastry readings, if you need to look at something between yourself and a, a romantic partner at this time, the link to book is below this video. Let's talk about your love life, Sagittarius. Where it comes to love, this full moon sees the governor of your love department preparing to move through the area that deals with your subconscious mind, blind spots in your intuition, and that's Mercury here. You may find that you're given to deeper thoughts at this time about what's unfolding in your love life and doing a bit of digging and detective work to figure out how things can move in a direction that's more aligned for you. For some of you, this is just going to be your intuition on a scale of 1 to 10 at 12. What Mercury also, with Mercury also trining Pluto here, preparing to move into the sector of consciousness. So they're in a nice little conversation there. And actually, it's not trying, it's square with that Mercury squaring Pluto. You may have a strong sense of how powerful your thoughts are and even a psychic sense about the thoughts of those around you, in particular when it comes to love. 
Trust the intuitive hits you get now, Sagittarius, as they are likely to be very accurate. Further, with Mercury also trying to Saturn at this full moon in your home sector, you may find that you're doing a lot of shedding of mindsets, behavioral patterns, and literal material possessions. And there's Saturn training that Mercury. That are that are no longer that are aligned to who you used to be in love and no longer aligned to who you're becoming. For Sagittarians in a committed bond, this may mean you're working your way through how you got to where you are in connection. If the place you're in is unfulfilling, others in a com- others may find themselves take making actual space in their mind and home to welcome new love. For Sagittari- for other Sagittarians looking for love, the internal process you're undertaking now does seem to set the stage for love to unfold in a more concrete way as we get into 2025 as you continue to shed patterns, ideas. And again, I got to say for some Sagittarians, this looks very material that are representative of the single life. So you can step into the identity of being a partner and thus magnetizing partnership to you by becoming the very thing that you wish to attract. All great work, Sagittarius. Keep it up and keep going. If you heard something that resonates or illuminates, definitely hit that like button and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you know when we're live again and you can join the conversation. Let's take a look at Capricorn at this full moon. Capricorn, Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising. For you, this full moon takes place in a sector of the sky that deals with home, family, and your origins story. You may feel a bit of rejection or abandonment from family members that you may think you've already that you may think you've already dealt with, or just plain and simple, a sense of being the odd one out. If this is the case, with help from Jupiter, sextile. From the sector that deals with coaches and therapists and doctors, etc., and teachers, not teachers, but mentors, these people may be able to help you overcome any lingering sense of feeling unwanted or like you may have been a burden to your family. Further, if there have been any challenges in your home where you felt these kinds of feelings with the people you live with, Let's say you have roommates per se. Again, the help is coming in from the location of therapists, coaches, and mentors. The root of this does seem to be about some level of achievement in your work sector that may have taken place recently that's elevated you and allowed you to call more of your own shots in your career. Capricorn, this looks like you may be facing either jealousy-based rejection or recognizing that you've surpassed the expectations of your family or the people you live with. And it's challenging for them to feel connected to you and you to feel connected to them at this time. Now, for some of you, this upcoming Mars retrograde period in the sector dealing with romantic partnerships here will be an opportunity for reconnection if this has been a spouse or live-in partner with whom you faced the rejection challenge. But for those of you who, with whom the issue has been roommates or family of origin, this will be an ideal time to seek professional support for how to create boundaries and communication and develop support systems outside of your home. For a small few, you may feel like you've stepped into a home that's out of your league in some way, like almost too good, and like you need to prove you're worthy to keep it. Not to worry, you've got Chericlo here, flowing through the earned income house and the house dealing with self-worth, self-esteem. So if it's money you need to keep your home, it will be given. And if it's courage you need, it is going to be granted. Now, if you need any support, understanding which direction things are taking, then by all means, you can book a reading over at kmoonastro.com. Link to do that is below this video. Capricorn, let's talk about your love life more directly. In the love department, you'll find this full moon does complete some cycle for those Capricorns in a relationship living with a partner. 
But before throwing the baby out with the bathwater, this is an ideal time to reassess where wounded communication may have gotten the best of you or your partner. If this is the case, there's a chance to bring things back together between now uh, and the end of the Mars retrograde in February in your love sector, since Mars is the ruler of that home sector. So again, if you are in a love-based relationship and you and your partner live together, this Mars retrograde could really help reestablish connection. For those in a committed bond, not experiencing this with a partner, this full moon energy may show up with family impacting your confidence in your love life. Now, this is a great time to ask for reassurance if you feel you need it. For those looking for love at this full moon, it's like you're it's like you're you'll find it through family or your hometown, but there's a significant possibility of connecting with someone while wounded and things looking quite differently after this energy passes. If anything should come up that rocks your confidence and love and it does look like it may be there, this is the right time to seek out professional support from a coach or therapist that can help you reset your love life. If past time wounding is creeping into present time love situations or holding you back from focusing on love at all, Capricorn, you've got this. Hang in there. All right. And if you heard something that resonates or illuminates, please hit that like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be a part of the conversation next time I am live for a lunar update. Let's go ahead and look at this full moon in Aries for the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. This full moon takes place in the sector that deals with your siblings, cousins, neighbors, as well as consciousness and communication. In particular, because we're dealing with Aries, much of this is about your self-talk. There may be some level of inner comparison going on for you if you have close people in this department or soul family that may cause you to wonder why is your life so hard and theirs seems so easy. Further, if you've struggled with mental health challenges in the past, with Chiron conjunct this full moon in the sector that deals with consciousness and the mind, you may find yourself revisiting some of the old wounds and pains that have plagued you in the past, only to get a, a lot deeper at the root of the challenge right now. With Mars, the governing planet of this full moon, preparing to go retrograde in the sector that deals with daily routines such as diet and exercise, physical health, doctors, therapists, coaches, you may find that changes or added support in one of these areas can help you with the wounding that shows itself now, in particular if there's anything neurochemical that has been a problem. If you need any support understanding how to go deeper with this, we can always look at this from the vantage point of your natal chart. When you book a reading below, I'm over at kmoonastro.com. Now, Aquarius, let's talk about your love life. Where it comes to love, Aquarius, there is some indication that what's coming up now in terms of mental and physical wellness as it pertains to thoughts and communication will be something that you're dealing with through February as the Mars retrograde continues to unfold. So we do see Pluto here at the tail end of the sector that deals with mental health, Mars here in the sector that deals with physical health, preparing to go retrograde, both of them squaring this full moon in the house of consciousness. This is going to give you a nice long period to work through the different pieces when it comes to what's wounding, what's mental health, what's physical health, and what's just plain old stinking thinking that you've outgrown. There's a strong indication that if you can take this time to nail these pieces now with the governor of your love department, the sun in your sector that deals with second marriages and second chances there in Libra, 
you will find yourself in a new relationship or new level of relationship if you're already committed in a matter of months. But there is something here in the way you've been thinking about yourself in general that needs to be handled first. And as mentioned, for some Aquarians, the thinking will shift with some new mental health maintenance because again, full moon is there here in the third house of consciousness. We've got a tight square from Pluto, a sector that deals with mental health itself. For others, this is going to shift through dealing with uh, shift through talking with a therapist or coach. We see Mars square this full moon in the sector that deals with therapists or coaches. Now, because these are both squaring energies, Aquarius, expect the process and the work to feel challenging. But Aquarius, you're no stranger to challenging mental tasks. If anyone can handle it, it's you. This is going to be a turning point in your love life where you have the chance to finally put down an old story that has not served you and loved. Now, while this process does look uncomfortable, you will find that on the other side, not only is love available, but so too is your leadership and love for those in your soul group. Aquarius, you got this. And if you heard something that resonates or illuminates, please hit that like button. Subscribe and share with your fellow Aquarians as they may be in need of the guidance as well. Lastly, but not leastly, let's talk about this full moon in Aries for the sign of Pisces. Pisces, sun, moon, and rising. This particular full moon takes place in a sector of the sky that has to do with your financial spending and earning, your self-worth and self-esteem, as well as what you value. You may find that something unfolds at this time that challenges your sense of self-worth and has an impact on your finances. Now, because of the Jupiter trine from your home sector, there could be a tendency to overspend on something that will make you feel at home in the world or to suddenly take a trip back home to recenter yourself. But that will not change the basic need to deal with the root cause of the issue, especially if there is woundedness in your relationship to money. With Mars already in shadow before a long retrograde period through the sector that deals with your creativity and your inner child, there will be an opportunity to deal with any wounds that have come from this area of life so that you can own your power to create, own your value, and own your money in new ways. This full moon may also see you needing to step back into some former role or financial pay rate temporarily as we close out the year, and it may undermine some of your confidence to need to do so. Whether you're doing it in a business you run as a measure of making ends meet, or you're getting a pay cut at work in order for the business you work for to make ends meet, Know that this does not have any reflection on your value in the world, and it will be necessary. This will be a great opportunity to detach your self-worth from the money you make during this period so that you don't take any challenging financial situations to heart. If you need any support figuring out how to work through a new money story or you've had a particular money pattern that's troubled you your whole life, our money patterns are always illuminated by our chart. You can always book with me at kmoonastro.com to find new solutions for any challenging financial behaviors. Let's take a look at your love life, Pisces. There is an indication with this full moon that you that it may bring some clarity about where you stand with a love interest on how how the connection makes you feel about yourself and that's specifically due to mercury coming out of the sector that deals with secrets or uh, repressed information and emerging here in scorpio which deals with deep thinking when mercury is in play for those in an established bond or in some form of flirtation where the bond has had the potential 
to come together in some real way if you've been putting up with or tolerating treatment that's caused you to feel less than in any capacity. You're going to find it easier to speak up and find your voice. Use your power now with Mercury and Scorpio and at the very least begin to understand the root of how a relationship of this nature could have gone so far. You may even find that as you heal things within your family down here, thank you, Jupiter, this gives space to a second chance in love, whether it's a committed bond or just a new season in love for those looking for it with Jupiter aspecting this full moon from the family department. With the modern ruler of your love department, Mercury, squaring Pluto here. You may find that it's you who has some sharp words for someone in your romantic world at this time. Alternatively, many of you are going to see that you're working through some deeply held belief systems about love and commitment that have been brought to the surface by this full moon's energy to let you know that it's just a story and stories can be rewritten. In fact, you may find that for love to either go deeper if you're in a committed bond or begin if you're looking, you're going to need to change your outlook and value of yourself in partnership and perhaps your outlook and value of partnership itself in order to take the next step in love. Pisces, for you, this is a very deeply transformative time, but if anyone can brave these emotional waters and find the transformation gold, it's you. As always, thank you to everyone for liking, subscribing, and sharing. If you're new here, welcome. I'm here at the new and the full moon to provide intel into how these energies can be utilized for your empowerment and growth the all signs is the cherry on top but i strongly recommend you listen to the lightworker energy update for a deep dive for how this in transformational energy can play out for you in a much broader sense in every area of life thank you so much to everyone who listens to the live i'll join you in the comment section for a little Q&A for one hour after this lunation. Thanks so much for being here. Take great care and bye for now.